Hello and welcome to the first of what I hope is many um, war, war poetry vlogs. Uh, I'm your host Paul Hodges and you're very welcome to uh, Sunny in Manchester in August. Um, I'm going to start off with just a couple of poems, one very old, one pretty new, um, talking about uh, war and the sort of the aim of this podcast is to look at war poetry wherever we may find it, um, whether it's ancient Greek, ancient Latin, uh, medieval, uh, Middle Eastern, global, global war, yeah, no limits really is what I'm trying to say. As is traditional on a vlog, we have to get um, the sponsorship <laughs> uh, stuff out of the way first. This podcast is sponsored by the fine UK coffee firm, Skull Crusher Coffee. Uh, their slogans include death before decaf. Yes, indeed. It's an addiction I will own up to. They sell beans and ground coffee. It's all effing strong. Um, they even do a lovely CBD coffee too, if you're interested in a no THC um, strong coffee makes you very mellow in my experience. Mm. Gorgeous. Um, the other sponsorship I have to mention is my own. I'm, I'm a doctor of uh, history. I gained my doctorate in 2007 from the University of Birkbeck. Uh, my supervisor was Professor Joanna Bork and my examiners were Professor Gary Sheffield and Dr Adrian Gregory. Um, so I do know what I'm talking about, not so much on the poetry front, because I specialised in atrocities in the First World War, um, particularly uh, British troops killing German prisoners on the Western Front. Uh, nasty subject, but a really important one. I'm publishing, self-publishing my book called Brutality in the Trenches later this year or early next year. Uh, if you want to be in the first signed hardback run, um, email me at P Papa Delta Z. Hodges, Hotel, Oscar, Delta, Golf, Echo, Sierra, at gmail.com. I'll just say that again, pdhodges at gmail.com. And I'll subscribe you to uh, my little newsletter. Um, I haven't got a website up and running yet for, for this project, but I uh, hope to do so fairly soon so we can have a forum. You can discuss your favourite war poems. Um, obviously, in the UK, um, the most famous poetry is uh, First World War poetry. Um, and you have uh, so many classic um, First World War poets um, publishing uh, through the war, after the war, um, in the 30s, and, and even a bit later. So we have um, characters like Siegfried Sassoon, also a novelist, um, Rupert Brooke, who died very young in the war, Wilfred Owen, who also died later in the war, uh, Edmund Blunden, who uh, survived the war. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, the list is... Uh, the list is uh, long. In the UK, um, poems of the Second World War uh, have a much lower profile for some strange reason. Well, I suppose um, I suppose um, it was much more of a mixed affair, the Second World War, so it wasn't, um, whereas, you know, First World War, all the famous poetry is trench-based, even though the war wasn't um, trench-based, certainly not in um, Africa and uh, other arenas. Um, anyway, I'm whispering on a bit. Should we crack on with the two poems I've selected? Um, uh, sponsorship slots are open if you want to sponsor this podcast vlog. Um, uh, otherwise, um, let's rattle on. So we shall go relatively modern first. And this is by um, a guy called John Betchman, uh, very famous in the UK. He was the poet laureate, which is an official um, an official post in the UK, currently held by the Yorkshireman Simon Armitage, whose poetry I really recommend. To you highly, he's a great poet. Um, so was John Betjeman, quite um, humorous in tone, but um, yes, uh, he had, had an interesting life. Um, uh, this poem's from 1937, before he was Poet Laureate. Um, he also wrote for the architecture column in the 60s and uh, 70s for Private Eye magazine, another fine magazine, uh, so he was hugely interested in architecture. Um, which sort of comes across in this poem, which is called Slough. Um, Slough is a town, uh, southeast of London, um, uh, yeah, uh, and this is what he wrote about it in 1937, uh, with a slight um, military hint, the military link's a little, um, little <laughs> tangential, shall we say. Uh, it was in one of his collected works published uh, called Continual Dew, so Slough by John Betjeman. 
become friendly bonds and fall on slough. It isn't fit for humans now. There isn't grass to graze a cow. Swarm over, death. Come bonds and blow to smithereens, those air-conditioned bright canteens. Tin fruit, tin meat, tin milk, tin beans, tinned mines, tinned breath. Mess up the mess they call a town, a house with 97 down, and once a week for half a crown for 20 years. And get that man with double chin, who'll always cheat and always win, who washes his responsive skin in women's tears. And smash his desk of polished oak, and smash his hands so used to stroke, and stop his boring dirty joke and make him yell. But spare the yuck, bald young clerks who add the profits of the stinking cad. It's not their fault that they are mad. They've tasted hell. It's not their fault they do not know the bird song from the radio. It's not their fault they often go to Maidenhead. And talk of sports and makes of cars in various bogus Tudor bars and daren't look up and see the stars but belch instead. In labour-saving homes with care, the wives frizz out peroxide hair and dry it in synthetic air and paint their nails. Come bear friendly bombs and fall on slough to get it ready for the plough. The cabbages are coming now. The earth exhales. So some um, interesting uh, stuff here. He obviously hates some um, suburban big town slough. Um, hates domestic violence, that's very clear. Which, so I hope we do all. Um, and he's asking for Bonds to come and rearrange the the uh, planet. And of course, Bonds were to fall on Slough in 1940, uh, three years after he published this poem. So um, let's continue to crack on and go with an old poem. This is taken from John Milton's uh, selected poems. Uh, he's best known as the, the author of the epic poem Paradise Lost. Um, he was born in 1608, died in 1674, um, and wrote a, wrote a lot of poetry, um, all of which is um, pretty amazing. Um, he went blind in later age, he was so famous for being blind, um, like Homer, the original Greek poet. Um, so, um, yeah, let's crack on and see what he says about the um, 1655 late massacre in Piedmont, which was basically a... Um, um, anti-Protestant rebellion put down by uh, Catholic troops um, ordered by the Vatican um, uh, in Piedmont. Okay, so uh, this is 1655, On the Late Massacre in Piedmont is the title. Avenge, O Lord, they slaughtered saints whose bones lie scattered on the Alpine mountains cold, even them who kept thy truth so pure of old, when all our fathers worshipped stocks and stones. Forget not in thy book record their groans. Who were thy sheep and in their ancient fold, slain by the bloody Piemontese, that rolled mother with infant down the rocks, their moans the veils redoubled to the hills, and they to heaven, their martyred bloods and ashes so, o'er all the Italian fields, where still doth sway the triple tyrant, that from these may grow a hundredfold, who, having learnt thy way, early may fly the Babylonian woe. Okay, I, I hope you really enjoyed those two shortish poems. Um, I, I, I think they're very good. Um, the Triple Tyrant, if you're looking for a reference, is the Pope. Um, I can't remember the Pope's name in 1655. I should have looked it up before talking to you. Um, uh, Babylonian, uh, so of course, modern, modern Iraq. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what... I mean, obviously, this was... 1655 was... Um, you know, after the Moorish invasion of Spain, so I don't know what the Iraqi reference is actually a reference to, which is um, interesting. Um, we'll look it up because um, obviously it will relates to the Iraq War, but um, probably even the kids watching this will remember. So, well, you're very welcome to the first vlog. I hope you really enjoyed it. I'm planning something a lot longer for the second vlog because I have a um, anthology of younger writers' poems of the Second World War. Um, which was published in I think, 42 or 43. Um, yeah, first published in July 42. And it has a very good, long introduction by the First World War poet, uh, Edmund Blunden. So I thought I would um, 
think. A bit of, uh, a bit, uh, bit of water and a uh, lot more skull crusher coffee and um, read you that introduction to um, set up a discussion about war poetry and, um, and uh, that sort of stuff. Um, I have lots more goodies. Obviously, we're going to cover uh, some of the classics, um, uh, Rupert Brooke, Wilfred Owen, um, I've got something from Larkin, uh, Philip Larkin, another poet laureate in the UK, um, I've got uh, 19th century colonial poetry by the famous author Rudyard Kipling, it's called Barrack and Ballads, um, I even have uh, a bit of uh, William Blake, a very famous um, uh, 19th century mad <laughs> painter and poet uh, and I have uh, you know one of the best um, compilations of first world war poetry so we'll get stuck into that fairly soon but as I say next next vlog if you want to subscribe click the YouTube stuffy I don't even know how to do that myself but I think you just click a ticky don't you um, if you want to subscribe do so now um, if you want to write to me pdhodges at gmail.com um, so uh, uh, thank you for listening from sunny Manchester. Um, I will close this vlog now. Cheers. Bye.